National Chairman Samuel Ofusuampofu has his hold before the High Court tomorrow to face conspiracy to cause harm and assault against a public officer charges slapped on him. An opposition NDC accused government of diverting over 1 billion Ghana cities of national health insurance scheme funds into projects contrary to core objectives of the scheme, predicting an imminent collapse of the scheme. More than a billion Ghana cities have been diverted for projects which are unrelated to the core objects of the national health insurance scheme. We'll also tell you how the scheme failed to conduct due diligence and risk assessment after allegedly transferring over 17 million Ghana cities into a private fund management company. Also tonight, fears about the distortion of history heightens as minority accuses the president of attempting to once again elevate J.B. Dankwa over Dr. Kwame Nkrumah as the GES prepares to roll out a new compulsory history syllabus at the basic level this September. There's a clear agenda to, if you like, distort the history history of Ghana in ways that would present J.B. Dankwa's uh, contribution as preeminent and above and beyond others like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I wouldn't be surprised if indeed a future NDC government would take another look at this. We have details as the National Council for Curriculum Assessment fights off the claim. And in business, uh, Emirates announces an interline agreement with Africa World Airlines. We're going to be exploring what this means to air travelers in 30 minutes. And later in sports, seasoned sports analyst warns Ghana's AFCON campaign could be jeopardized if money becomes a key issue. Um, you want to join us with your views and comments? Send us a WhatsApp 0244340437. My name is Evans Mentor. I am MFA Paul. Stay for details. And tonight, the national chairman of the NDC, Samuel Ofosuampofu, will finally have his day in court because the attorney general has decided to prosecute him. He will tomorrow be held before the high court charged with conspiracy to cause harm and assault against a public officer. The decision by the attorney general to prosecute the national chairman of the largest opposition party comes after weeks of investigations by the police criminal investigations department into a leaked secret recording in which Mr. Ofosuampofu is alleged to have threatened some public officers. The NDC has issued a statement tonight on that matter. Evans, we know from the statement that Samuel Ofosuampofu is not the only NDC executive member appearing in court tomorrow. Well, also appearing tomorrow is a Deputy National Communications Officer, Mr. Kweku Bwaheng. Um, we don't know what he's charged with, right? He, uh, they will appear before uh, Justice Asiru's Commercial Court. Uh, this is tomorrow at uh, at uh, at 8 a.m. to answer the charges as we've already talked about. Now, but we know based on what has transpired in the public domain as far as Kweku Bwahin is concerned. Remember when uh, the story broke about the leaked tape? Mm -hmm. uh, he was on one of our sister stations at Sampa FM and had indeed said that the the voice was that of the of and the national chairman that and meeting. that he was part of that meeting and the things that were said were said. In fact, he defended it and mm -hmm. says that people didn't like it. It could go and bend the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also know that then, you know, the uh, the party itself had maintained that that cannot be his voice and it's been ducted. Um, and, and that's what we know as far as the public, the way this has played out in the public is concerned. Of course, we know, for example, for himself, had vehemently, and in fact, in this statement, the party categorically, uh, flatly denies the charges against him uh, but they will have the case in court. We're also learning from the uh, our sources uh, within the Attorney General's department indicating that uh, the docket uh, had, had, had been ready for some time. Um, the police did their investigations. Uh, Mr. Fusampofu has constantly been reporting at the CID uh, to answer questions as part and assist with the process of investigations. investigations. Okay. And uh, the, the AG feels confident now that they have enough to, to win a case. And that's the only reason why uh, they decided to, to proceed uh, to the court now with, with the evidence that, that they have. Thankfully, uh, we can speak to a member of some of Usampofo's legal team, uh, Victor Adaudu. Mr. Adaudu, thank you for your time here on Newsnight. Yeah, thank you, Evans. Um, <clears throat> good evening to your Charles. I know you've been going uh, with your clan to the... As he had headquarters since this story broke, did you expect this to come to travel this far? That he will actually be prosecuted for it? Um, thank you, Ivan. Again, um, listening to the tape that was in the public domain on social media, and listening to what the police gave to us, 
there were two different things, and I didn't expect that this would go anywhere. But it is the decision of the prosecution, that is the Attorney General, to initiate any criminal proceeding. So if they decide to initiate a criminal proceeding, they are, they are welcome. Uh, okay, so tell me something. Um, has, has he been cooperating with the police over the time? Oh, very, very, very. And it was, it's been very cordial. Um, as you know, he's the national chairman of the party, the biggest opposition party. So he's been a very busy person. And we explained this to the police that every day in and day out, he has to meet party faithful. He has national assignments. He has other duties to do. So they should give us proud notice any time they want him. And consistently, they give us notice, and we always report. Any time they want us, and he's available, we give us notice. We go to the police, and we cooperate with them. It has been very cordial, and uh, I think he himself has also confirmed that this is the first time he's had any brush with the police. And he's been with the police, and the police also had been at least happy with the way we conducted ourselves before then. Uh, you make the point at the beginning that um, based on the evidence that you, you know, based on your own um, knowledge of the case, you didn't expect that um, this will travel this far. Is it that in the course of the investigations, the agency department may have come uh, may have come to some additional evidence that you may not be aware of? Um, if, if the tip that I listened to and the team listened to. I think that for us, there's nothing criminal in that thing. Um, the issues that were raised were that they had some few security concerns, and they were looking at those security concerns uh, for the good of the public, that they should not be taken unaware if there's any security issues. However, looking at it as criminal matter, we didn't see any criminality in what was said purported to have been said, because the source of even the tape is questionable, and that is one of the issues we have to look Unless they have something concealed or something that they have that we, didn't, we haven't had. But thankful um, with the criminal jurisprudence now, everything that you have, you will need to bring it to the notice of the accused to prepare for his defense. So after we go and bail is given, every evidence that we will rely on will be brought to our notice and we will get every evidence that they may have. I read from the party's statement tonight uh, that Mr. Kweku Bwahing, who is a Deputy National Communications Officer, is also uh, being prosecuted. We, we know very little about his case. What more can you tell us about it? Yes, all is in the uh, relation to the alleged tape, alleged leak tape. And, you know, Kokuba, he also spoke that he had some knowledge of that tape. And I believe that it is, that's why they are charging him for conspiracy to cause harm and assault on public officer. You will, <clears throat> as you are already aware, they were three when the national communication officer also came out, Sami Dimfi. But with uh, the advice from the Attorney General, his charges have been dropped. So there's no albatross around his neck as we speak today that he will be prosecuted. The charges have been dropped again. So these two people, the National Chairman and the Deputy National Communication Officer, these are the two people that they've uh, slapped two charges or laid two charges against and will be arraigned before court tomorrow. Mm, safe to say it's because Mr. Boahin was on radio admitting that he was in this meeting and the things that uh, were attributed to some of us and Puffo were indeed said. Is that why that he was being added to the to the list to be prosecuted? Um, maybe partly that might be the decision because and then the alleged meeting that Kwekuba and he said he was, was there that actual tape or not? Uh, it is something that will be debated because he had clearly said that yes, he was at one meeting but what was played, and he listened, and the host said, he told the host that that is what he's saying, but at the meeting, what he heard is not what uh, the host was saying. So he read it to him, and part of it, he said, yes, some was said, but 
I don't think he admitted that some of those things were said. Confident, knowing what you know now and what you may not know that the AG may have, that this case would turn out the way you've said it will? Because I know in the beginning, the, the party had categorically dismissed this as a, tea, a, a storm in a teacup. Um, that's what I said. That Looking at it with my uh, legal eyes, that as a criminal matter, it will not go anywhere. It will be difficult to have evidence to secure a conviction. Uh, but I'm not naive to also say that when you have cases which are sometimes laced with uh, political matters and others, anything can happen. So we'll have to only prepare and prepare well for it. And, and just out of curiosity, the party issued a statement simply announcing that the national chairman will be in court tomorrow, indicating the time, which court, etc. Why was that necessary? I think it's very necessary because this is the, the national chairman of the party who had been the leader of the party until the flag bearer was elected. So everybody is looking up to him, especially members of the party and our sympathizers look up to him as national chairman. So every day in, day out, party people are looking up to what he's doing so that he can bring the party into uh, government. So anytime something like this in relation to national party, uh, the national chairman and the executives, the party people want to know. And I think that the party also owes it a duty to tell their devotees, their followers, and sympathizers that this is what is happening within the party. I'm grateful that you joined us, uh, Victor Adaudu. He's a member of the um, Samofu Sampofo legal team. And we're in court tomorrow to bring you the very latest from that hearing. But let's stay a while longer on the NDC and other related matters because uh, they are alleging that in the last two years, over 1 billion Ghana cities of the National Health Insurance Scheme funds have been diverted into projects which are adverse uh, to the core objectives of the scheme. At the time, the scheme is struggling to offset debt owed service providers. According to the party, the authority last year expended over 160 million of the scheme's fund to pay nascent trainee allowances and 5 million million Ghana cities devoted to corporate social responsibility this year. Now, the schemes uh, indebtedness to service providers, according to the NDC, has uh, contributed to the sharp decline in active membership in the last two years, something that we'll be checking with the service providers themselves shortly. The national organizer of the party, Sabi Jemfi, says his scheme might collapse if government fails to reverse a trend. He spoke at the news conference today. 2018, about 163 million Ghana cities of National Health Insurance funds has been, I mean, w w was used to pay nursing training allowances, an expenditure which is supposed to be funded from the consolidated fund of Ghana. We are using the meager resources of the National Health Insurance Scheme to fund that. While the scheme continues to struggle, more than 300 million Ghana cities has been projected to be spent on ICT. And another five million Ghana cities is being devoted to corporate social responsibility all in 2019. So you have a situation where a very key health facility like the Central, Region, uh, Central Regional Hospital is on its knees, begging government for an amount of 6.1 million Ghana cities, begging the authority because the authority owes the hospital and that is affecting their services. As a result of that, cardholders are being turned away and so on and so forth. And yet, government is allocating a whopping 300 million for just ICT. Why? Uh, it speaks volumes, if I can put it that way, of the recklessness and the mismanagement of the National Health Insurance Scheme under the watch of President Ekufo. The wanton misapplication of National Health Insurance funds stems largely from the obnoxious capping policy introduced by the Kufuado government, through which, over the last two years, more than a billion Ghana cities have been diverted for projects which are unrelated to the core objects of the National Health Insurance Scheme. You all know of the capping and realignment policy of government. In 2018, for example, the National Health Insurance Scheme budgeted that it was going to rake in a total revenue of 2.2 billion. More than 900 million of that amount was capped 
and used for so-called flagship programs. We all know that dire financial straits that the National Health Insurance Scheme has been in since time immemorial. And so to ensure the financial sustainability of the program, it behoves on government to introduce additional sources of revenue. So the party also alleges that government has illegally transferred over 17 million Ghana CDs of National Health Insurance Scheme funds into a private fund man management company, all-time capital investment, they say. Now, adding the transaction was done without due diligence and risk assessment. My colleague, Kwesi Pakawa, also was at the news conference and joins us in studio with it. Bottom line, did the party give provide any evidence to back these allegations? Well, yes, uh, MFA, the party did. In fact, they gave us uh, copies of letter make correspondence between Alta and Capital and the National Health Insurance Scheme. And I have a copy with me here. Let mm -hmm. me just go, go, go through it. Now, this letter was written by the National Health Insurance Scheme on the 5th of February 2019. Now, they were requesting for their money, so their investment with the uh, the, the bank, I mean, the, the, the private investment bank. Now, it says, redemption of fixed deposit investment now I read, we refer to our letter dated November 23, 2018 on the above subject and extensive discussion and meetings held with you on the same matter. We wish to bring to your attention that we have since not had any response to the above letter as at today, February 5, 2019, and write to instruct as follows, that you pay in full our matured principal investment of over 8 million Ghana cities plus all accrued interest that you pay in full a mature principal investment of over 1.6 million Ghana cities plus all accrued interest. And then three, that you pay in full a principal investment of over 5 million Ghana cities plus all accrued interest, which is due to mature on April 19, uh, 2019. So that will be just about four days or three days away from today. Mm -hmm. So please transfer into the account details below. So they provide an account that they want and the money to, to be transfer uh, transferred into. So mm -hmm. kindly give effect to the above instruction and confirm accordingly. We count on your value corporation, yours faithful, Ahmed Imoro. He's the director of budget and uh, management accounting. So this is from the National Health Insurance Scheme to the all-time private company. Now, uh, in response, they, 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 they acknowledge a letter by saying that, yeah, we acknowledge receipt of your letter dated February 5, 2019, requesting for full payment of all your investment as detailed below and deeply sorry for the inconvenience caused due to our inability to effect payment as expected. We mm -hmm. are currently experiencing some challenges redeeming our investment from our counterparties. As per our discussion, we do humbly plead that you allow the investment to run for a year whilst we arrange to fully settle our obligation on or before maturity. Okay. Meanwhile, we are also disposing of some assets and shares to meet spending redemption. We look forward to your usual favorable consideration. Please acknowledge receipt by signing the attached duplicate of this letter. And it's from the Chief Executive Officer, All Time Capital Limited, Peter Iliasu. So and we are yet to independently verify the authenticity of that document as was provided by the NDC. But right. we've been trying to get some response also from the National Health Insurance. Yes, I mean, if I've been checking with the managers of the National Health Insurance scheme now, uh, they tell me that, in fact, there were some inaccuracies as far as this press conference is concerned. And they are preparing their response tomorrow. They will be they will be issuing a statement to let Ghanaians know mm. that what the NDC said, some of them were not true, and also come and clarify the issues by the end of tomorrow. Well, that's my colleague Parker Wilson. He uh, attended that. Let's conference. check some of the details as the NDC had put out today, uh, particularly the claims about indebtedness. Uh, we can speak to the president of the Association of Private Health Care Providers, uh, Upper East, Dr. Francis Asana, joins us on the telephone line. Uh, uh, doc, thank you for your time here on Newsnight. Yes, Hello, Doc. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for your time here on Newsnight. Hello. Uh, we understand that, uh, is it true that your association is owed by the National Health Insurance Scheme? That is very true. Okay, how, how much is involved? <laughs> it would be difficult for me to tell the amount because you see we are an, we are an association and the association we have about 27 uh, hospitals who come together to form the association each hospital uh, gives a different amount to be vetted and to be paid and uh, as association we are not able to 
pick each hospital's amount and then quantify it. What we can say is how many men we are being owed. That I can talk about. How, how, how many men are you, are you owed? For now, it's between 8 to 10 men, roughly. Have you written to the Health Insurance Authority about this, and what have they told you? Exactly. We wrote a letter on the 14th of March, and we gave this letter to the regional minister. And then we pleaded with her to let the authorities know that things are very difficult for us in Upper East here, especially where the health provision is. We gave the letter to the regional director of health services, and we gave the letter to the regional director of the national insurance scheme. They all promised us to send our letter to uh, all the authorities that day, and then we'll get. We pleaded with them that if by the end of the month, that was by 30th to 31st March, we don't get anything. It will be so difficult for us to continue to procure drugs to provide service. But they hadn't paid us for some time by then. And then they all promised us that they would let us hear from them. We have, as I speak, we haven't had an official response. But on the first week of this month, from 2nd to 5th of April, some payment was made. I've written about two men had been paid to us. So when we received this money, well, we we're grateful for the two men. But we held a press conference last week, Sunday, not yesterday, the other Sunday. And we thanked them for the two men's payment. I made it clear that they must be able to sustain this payment. Where there is about three or four men and money is not yet paid, it makes it very difficult for us, especially with those in the private sector. Because you agree with me that when it comes to those who are in the public sector, so many of their financial obligations are being taken on by government, especially salaries. Government pays salaries of uh, nurses and doctors who work in the public sector, but not us. You have two doctors, you have a staff strength of about 80 to 100, and at the end of the month, you don't get anything. And APA is peculiar in the sense that the rate of people who use the national insurance here is very high, one of the highest in the country. Between 95 to 98 percent of those who attend our hospitals come with national insurance, and therefore it leaves us without any source of income. Because if you have to provide laboratory, X-ray, bed services, everything to insurance, and at the end of the month you don't get anything, it makes sense. And understand so and understand that you you say that if this is not addressed urgently, you will begin withdrawing services. Well, no, we didn't say that. What we said was that when we wrote that letter on the 14th, we made it clear that if by the 30th of March we don't get anything, what we will do is that we will be unable to secure drugs or to procure drugs and non-logistics to give to the clients. So we might be tempted. We are not withdrawing any service. We will just write for them to go to town and buy. Mm. Okay, so but based on what you've received in the last couple of weeks, yes, we, we, you, yes. we that, able that, to procure drugs. Okay, so that is not going to happen anymore. It's not going to happen. Okay, it's but, not going but to happen just, because mm. we, 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 we have received at least two men's payment. So you can take one men's payment, pay salaries and other things, then you take the other men's, you go and buy drugs and come and continue giving. But for how long can that happen? It means it will happen for another one month. We, after one meal, getting to two meals, if no money comes again, we'll be back to how where we are, where we can't get any drugs for the, their clients. Because, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that you joined us uh, just to clarify the situation with the health uh, insurance scheme um, in the Upper East region. Uh, that is the president of the Association of Private Health Care Providers uh, in the Upper East region, Dr. Francis Asana. Uh, if, we, if, we, if we stay with us and return from the break, uh, fears about the distortion of history heightens as minority accuses the president of attempting to once again elevate J.B. Dankwa over Dr. Kwame Nkrumah as a GS prepares to roll out a new compulsory history syllabus at the basic level this September. Stay with us. Take good years of loyalty, service with integrity. 
Your success, our passion. This is what you've been waiting for. The internet experience you've been dreaming about. Welcome to Vodafone's Gigabit Net. Music, pictures, and large documents downloaded in seconds. Lessons from your favorite online masterclass streamed right into your bedroom. With Vodafone's Gigabit Net, it's not downloading. It's downloading. It's not sending. It sends. It's not buffering. It's streaming. Switch to Vodafone and get the real 4G experience on Ghana's only Gigabit Network. Get 100% bonus for every daily, weekly, or monthly bundle purchase via Star 700 Hash. The future is exciting. Ready? Thank you, folks. On my air list today, show some love for Contractor EB. <laughs> <laughs> so, Contractor, yeah. what do you think about the country's changing skyline? Oh, send them down there, show you, man. Across skyline, they change you, pop, 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 pop. Wow. Contractor, don't you get worried when you hear of buildings collapsing? I'm not from a nice one on Tassam. Ninginara, it is the lackability of using low quality product. Too. Please explain why. Yeah, cement is a new quality on your gasm. Village of FUC way. It was built with gasm. Yeah. Says so the gasm, they all construct. Gasem, three cement grates, greater value. Gasem, the nation builder. Thanks for staying with us here on Newsnight. Uh, before we go for business, though, because uh, Charles is on standby, or before then, uh, before the fears about uh, this education issue heightens, let's uh, do business. Then when we come back, I uh, would we'll delve deeper into that announcement of uh, the rollout of the curriculum in September. What's in business, Charles? All right, so coming up in business, Emirates announces an interline agreement with Africa World Airlines. What does this mean for air travelers? We're going to be finding out. And also we find out why a sector that shows a lot of potential could cause change, uh, seen as distractive and disruptive as the microfinance sector reforms loom. Business News on Newsnight is brought to you by MTN. Welcome to a new world of business. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all office essential. And First National Bank, we are the bank that understands your business news. First National Bank, how can we help you? It's your day off and you end up looking after the baby while your wife goes off to work. You realize you have no idea how to change a diaper. So, you when you call your wife. Hello, darling. Yeah, hello. Hello. Hojo, is everything all right? Everything is all right. I'm not seeing Toku. How do I change a baby's diaper, please? Hojo. Hojo. Okay, first, put the diaper... The video call freezes. <laughs> While you wait for the internet to catch up, the baby sprouts a fountain and wets the diaper. As you are getting a new one, your wife comes back online. Kojo, no! Why did you leave a beku alone on the bed? But I had to go and get a new diaper. What must I do next? I beg, quick, 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 quick. Open quick. the front of the diaper. It's the side that has. Wow, look, eh? the video freezes again. Abba. By now, you know where the conversation is going. There's no buffering in real life. So why accept it from your internet connection? Get connected and experience ultra-fast internet to your home, powered by MTN Fiber Broadband. We day for you, everywhere you go. We give you nothing but the best. We stay above the rest. More quality, more affordability. Yes, with our 30 days credit facility with no interest charge, free delivery services, and our free consultation on setting up your office, Kingdom Books and Stationery is unmatched in our delivery of quality and affordable office essentials, equipment, and furniture. Experience world-class customer service in all our branches in Accra, Temba, Kumasi, Cape Coast, and Takwadi. Call us on 0302-764-101 or visit our website at www.kingdom.com. GH.com. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all of its essentials Kingdom and stationery. Terms and conditions apply. Let us help you bank with the right bank.
At First National Bank, we're more than just a bank. We're a digital partner that actually understands your business. Enjoy massive value with our various banking solutions. Get a business check account, a day-to-day -day transactional account for all businesses from all sectors of the economy. Access our online banking enterprise and bank your way 24-7. Invest with our short or long-term options that enable immediate access to funds. Optimize your cash flow, raise capital, and acquire assets with ease with our lending solutions. Solutions, trade with speed, consistency, and innovation with our global payments and forex solutions. With so much value up for grabs, there is no reason not to bank with First National Bank. First National Bank, how can we help you? Um, honey, I need to get some. But I don't have cash on me. <laughs> Let me get some fuel quickly and, and let's go. And how are you going to get the fuel? I thought you said you didn't have cash on you. What is this one? My Puma card. All it takes is a card. The Puma card allows you to buy fuel cash-free from all Puma energy filling stations. You can use your Puma card with any visa points of sale and ATM across the country. The Puma card also works on mobile money. You get amazing discounts when you fill up with your Puma card. So register for free and get your Puma card instantly at any Puma filling station. And you only got one for yourself, eh? Yeah, well, I have had that piece of mind. Oh, thank you, honey. And where are you going? I'm getting something from the shop real quick. I need to test the card. <laughs> Puma card. Cash-free convenience. Imagine living in a world of comfort and luxury. In a well-planned and gated community with access to an ultra-modern sports complex which has Olympic-sized swimming pools, football, basketball, athletics, and gym facilities. I'm talking about Eden Heights, the new destination for luxury in Ghana. Eden Heights is developed with the highest grade of finishing in our penthouses in our one to four bedroom apartments and is located close to the beach resorts along the Atlantic Ocean, about 30 minutes drive from the airport and five minutes walk from the West Hills Mall. Eden Heights is the ideal location for luxury. Visit us at edenheights.com.gh or email to sales at edenheights.com.gh or call us on 050-153-1444 or 050-153-1445 for more information. Eden Heights, welcome home. Joy 99.7 FM, radio for the discerning listener. And you're welcome back to Business on Newsnight with me, Charles I. To hear the details of the stories, Emirates, the world's largest international airline and Ghana-based Africa World Airlines, have announced a one-way interline agreement. Interline agreement is a voluntary commercial agreement between individual airlines to allow passengers to change from one flight onto the other. Of course, what this means is that they wouldn't have to gather their bags or check in again. With this new partnership, Emirates customers can connect onto selected routes of Africa World Airlines network opening up new African destinations for Emirates customers for May 2019. We have more in this report. Per the agreement, passengers on Emirates network can now benefit from greater connectivity to West Africa. Passengers flying from Dubai, China, India and Australia can now connect from Accra onto Africa World Airlines flights to Kumasi, Tamale and Sekendi Takrade in Ghana and regional destinations such as Monrovia in Liberia and Freetown in Sierra Leone. Emirates passengers can choose from seven weekly flights from Dubai to Accra until the 2nd of June 2019 when Emirates will increase services on the route to 11 weekly flights. The agreement with Africa World Airline will further extend Emirates connectivity from Accra with up to 10 flights daily to Kumase, four flights daily each to Tamale and Takrade, and six weekly flights to Monrovia and Freetown. And that was a business desk report. Now, microfinance institutions are supposed to provide two key services, being financial and social assistance to the productive poor in order to improve their livelihoods. But in Ghana, the situation is not that particular way, especially when most microfinance institutions are capitalizing on profit making. But why is this a situation? Roderick Aye has been explaining on the business edition of PM Express. Over time, because the concentration became something on profitability, we look at the bottom line. How much am I making from this transaction? I give you the loan and then you pay me. When the institutions notice that 
the kind of clientele they were dealing with as against the, the high cost they were running, they knew they could not keep to the kind of clientele in terms of the microfinance clientele, which you can actually describe and categorize them. So they shifted from the low income earner, the poor, the pro, pro, uh, productive poor, to let's say the salaried worker. And they moved from the salaried worker to somebody who actually can take a loan from a universal bank. Because if you look at the microfinance system, because it's a bit smaller and they don't have so much structure, when you present a loan to a microfinance office and then a universal office, all things being equal, you can get a decision from the microfinance institution faster. Meanwhile, the managing director for Jira Microfinance, Akofa Ahiafo, says despite the situation, there still remain hope in the sector. Ghana is only one of three African countries, including Mauritius and Senegal, which have ratified both the AU. Well, apologies for that wrong answer, but let's move on to other stories where Ghana currently has joined the League of Nations in the United Nations to lead the development of strategies to fight cybercrime in the member nations. This follows the ratification of the Budapest Convention on Cybersecurity by Parliament before going on recess. Minister of Communications, Esla Wusuekufu, speaking to Joy Business after the ratification, hinted that all the international agencies under the United Nations are looking forward to Ghana providing the leading role in the fight against cybercrime in West Africa. Ghana is only one of three African countries, including Mauritius and Senegal, which have ratified both the AU Convention, the Malabo Convention, and the Budapest Convention. And so we've joined a really exclusive club. And all the international agencies are looking up to us to provide leadership in cyber security in the sub region. ECOWAS wants us to take leadership in this area. The systems we put in place without much funding, but with very dedicated staff, are being recommended for adoption across the region. Esla Usokufu is Minister for Communications. Head of Business Programming at Multimedia Group, Emma Morrison, has called on corporate Ghana to give women the chance to take up positions in the corporate world. Her call comes after being honoured as the Corporate Personality of the Year at the Just Ended Glitz Women of Honours event that came off this weekend. Transitioning from being a journalist into corporate and everything has been amazing. And I always tell people that don't stay the same, don't stay on one level, aspire to move up. You know, it's challenging, but I also want to encourage young upcoming women that they should put themselves forward and rise up to the challenge and they can also make it. Head of Business Programming at Multimedia Group, Emma Morrison. And just before we leave on the stock market, shares of Goyle went up by two pesos to close trading at two cities for pesos. GCB, SCB and Carl Banks all lost a peso on their shares, while Bento Oil Palm lost two pesos to close trading at four cities, 13 pesos. And that's it by way of business on Newsnight, MFA. Uh, Charles, thank you very much. Now, the announcement of the rollout of a new curriculum at the basic and junior high school levels continue to generate public debate across the country. Now, the Ghana Education Service last week announced that starting this September, a new curriculum that puts greater emphasis on literacy and numeracy and make the study of uh, history of Ghana a compulsory subject for class one to class six will take effect. Now, the study of history has become topical, especially because there are concerns that there is a deliberate attempt to uh, downplay the achievement of Osadiofo uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, since the children will have to learn about those that came before him, including uh, Dr. J.B. Dankwa from class one to class uh, to the upper classes and wait to learn about Dr. Nkrumah when they get to JHS level. Now, this has raffled some further. As a deputy ranking member, on the Education Committee in Parliament, Dr. Clementa Park says a new syllabus is an attempt by the president to make his family member, J.B. Dankwa, relevant in Ghanaian politics above Dr. Nkrumah. Listen. The content of the current syllabus seems to be skewed uh, towards uh, promoting a particular Ghanaian personality. Uh, in this case, my attention has been drawn to the fact that uh, several times the name Dr. J.B. Dankwa has been mentioned. Uh, people have taken the time to count uh, at least nine times in the document uh, compared to Nkrumah, which uh, has appeared only twice. Now, what is bothering many... What's the big deal with that? What is bothering many people is that there is a whole section uh, in Primary 5 that focuses on the role played by uh, J.B. Dankwa. 
uh, whereas there's no section in the syllabus indicating the role played by Dr. Nkrumah. So people are really leaning into it, given that we know that J.B. Dankwa is the president's uh, relative. So the assertion is that this is yet another example of a clear attempt by the current president to promote, eulogize, and if you like, immortalize his family and his ancestry to the detriment of the true history uh, of Ghana. And many have pointed to other examples of previous attempts to try and name the University of Ghana after J.B. Dankwa. They've also pointed to the change of uh, Republic Day to Constitution uh, Day, and indeed the change of Founders Day to Founders Day. So you have uh, Dr. Clementa Park, a, a PAC, I should say, a member of the Education Committee in Parliament. Now, this document that we're talking about, my colleague Kujo Yangsen has gone through it and joins us in the studio. It's a 70-page document, and it looks like the number of times J.B. Dankwa appears, as against the number of times Dr. Kwame Nkrumah appears in the document, is now a, a subject of debate amongst several others. Uh, what did you find? Well, MFI, I think it's important to put it all into perspective. You mm -hmm. see, this uh, curriculum is supposed to be a guide for how teachers should um, give a, s a certain range of information to their pupils. So by the end of every strand, their pupils should have learned certain things. Okay. Now, just to make sure that uh, teachers don't feel the need to go and find all of the content by themselves, the curriculum provides what they call indicators and exemplars. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, specific examples that a teacher can use to teach the content so that by the end of these lessons the pupils have learned about a particular part of our history so it is in these exemplars that jb dankwa uh, gets set a certain number of mentions if you will okay and uh, so, so for instance uh, on page four for instance uh, yes. under the indicators and exemplars mm. we are going to explain why in the past ghana was known as the gold coast right. and point three says you need to discuss the role of dr jb dankwa in linking the civilizations of the ancient ghana empire to the akan of the forest region of Ghana. That's so that's right. the first time that we see uh, Dr. J.B. Uh, Dankwa mm. uh, gets a mention in that uh, curriculum. So it yes. goes on a number of pages where you see that happen. But my concern also is that at a point where you're supposed to teach uh, the children uh, the number of presidents that the country has, uh, you know, we've had as a country, mm. there Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's name will come in because it's from 1960 to 2016. Indeed. But in that particular exemplars and indicators, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's name was not mentioned. Does it mean that he won't be mentioned by the teachers? As you see, I think... The, the argument. Well, uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, it, because uh, you have to cover that period, you mm -hmm. are bound to mention Dr. Nkrumah. And there are further examples of indicators and exemplars that mention Dr. Nkrumah. So, for example, um, on page uh, 64, uh, it talks about how by the end of this particular uh, strand, the students, should, the people should be able to describe the role played by the leaders of the two major political parties, UGCC and CPP, okay. in the independence struggle in the Gold Coast after the Second World War. And so here it actually mentions that the learners should map out specific roles by leaders such as Kwame Nkrumah, J.B. Dankwa, Obeche Bilamte, Akwenje, William Ufuriata, and Edward Ikufo Ado. So yes, perhaps uh, <laughs> even more family members of the president mentioned here. But the idea is that um, the curriculum wants to teach um, the students about specific periods in our history. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the exemplars mentioned Dr. J.B. Dankwa. But I don't think that limits a teacher to not teaching the children about Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, this curriculum can achieve that. But you can certainly see why those who have seen an extensive mention of Dr. J.B. Dankwa. In fact, there is an entire strand dedicated to him. Uh, if you go to page 61, I believe, mm -hmm. in, when you get to uh, class 6, um, it's actually not 61, it's page 62. When you get to class 6, you are supposed to learn ba basically everything about uh, J.B. Dankwa and his role in the fight for independence. It's an entire exemplar dedicated to him alone. Okay. You know, so yes, you can see that there is some emphasis on uh, bringing out the history of J.B. Dankwa, which uh, <laughs> some people believe has been downplayed over time. So mm. there is now a deliberate intention to bring it out as well. If you leave Kojo, he'll go through the 70 pages <laughs> right here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kojo. But we can hear from the chairman of the Ghana National Education uh, Campaign Coalition, Gene Kofi Asari, who says this should be done devoid of politics. Unfortunately, our history has been um, visited with some politics, you know, 
Um, it, 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 what you're saying, is it a position of the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition? No, I'm explaining that. Okay. Ghana, the government of Ghana has a position. There is a law, okay, that recognizes that, for instance, Ghana wasn't funded by one person, but it was founded by a group of persons, by a group of people. Right, we have Founders Day. We know, we know, we are all aware about the Founders Day, and then all the 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 hula balu around founder apostrophe s and then founder with that apostrophe and all that. So we can't run away from the fact that there is a political, um, there is there is some element of politics in our history, and the politics is is as a result of how various um, um, schools of thought view the role in Kuma played in our independence. Now, Professor Kwame Osei-Kwating led all this, uh, drawing up uh, this um, curriculum. And he's, however, fighting off the claims about relegating Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's achievement to the background. We didn't design the curriculum based on any political consideration. We designed the curriculum purely based on professional historical consideration. We were looking at all the historical figures who emerged at the time. Some of them came before others. And some will be given prominence as progress. Or study for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's name will be replaced in the uh, curriculum from JHS up to SHS. We decided to highlight the role that JB Danko played so that the students will also know. Because if you come to the university, we have a, a course, a program for intellectual history of Ghana. And in that intellectual history of Ghana, JB Danko plays an active role. But because we don't study the history at the basic level, nobody knows about it. It's only when you go up there. So it's about time we let the students know that there was also J.B. Dankwa who also played the role. So that the history becomes balanced. It's not skewed towards one direction as some people want us to believe. Based on what you're saying, you're saying that it was a mission to ensure there's a balancing act. It, not that it was a mission to ensure that there's a balancing act. We were looking at the facts as they are, the facts. As, we, we, uh, the history, uh, as the history play out in, 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 in Ghana's body politics, and that we want the students to know, or the people to know the history as it unfolded. Serious. There's a, I've visited a community called Tumu. There, there are some schools there. They will not, yeah. they will not be able to get videos or pictures of these presidents or even Dr. Kwame Nkrumah or Dr. J.B. Dankwa to do yeah. the demonstration in the classroom. But your curriculum is stating yeah. that these will be the actions of the teachers in the classrooms to demonstrate and teach. How would they do that? In the books that we have, if you take any history, you will get pictures of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you get pictures of Dr. J.B. Dankwa. Even all characters and what that, they are there. So if you're a teacher and you cannot secure this thing, it's a comprehensive educational reform. So the implemented GS are supposed to provide the schools with the uh, necessary teaching learning material. Yes. Uh, if the ministry in uh, Ghana Education Service were not able to provide it fully for the implementation of the current one that we have that will be expiring before mm. September, what makes you think that they can do it for the new curriculum that you have put together? What makes me think? Let me tell you, let's put the Ghana Education Service aside. Every teacher is supposed to be professional. If the teacher in Tumuhu teaches this place, if he tells me he doesn't have a Dubois head evolution and change, or in a FB World History Book, or even the current SHS History Book, and that teacher is not well uh, being called a teacher, and he's not supposed to be there, he should even be brushed out of the classroom. You, you, you can even ask and ask the teacher who is an artist to even draw the picture for you. Yeah, what you have, you can trade it. You see, teaching is an art. A teacher should not say that I don't have the resources, therefore I'm holding my art. Then you are not a teacher. So you heard there, Professor uh, Kwame Kwating, uh, or say there, or say Kwating, I beg your pardon, uh, there, speaking to Roland Walker on the AM show earlier uh, today. Now let's speak to the PRO for the Ghana Education Service, Madam Cassandra Chumampo, for we are grateful for your time here on Newsnight. So it all starts in September. Is everything in place for a smooth rollout? Yes, thank you so much, I'm a fan. Good evening to your listeners. Yes, um, for the smooth implementation of the curriculum, um, we're going to roll out a nationwide training, beginning with 150 trainers. They are called the master trainers. And then if you have time, I'll run by you the people that include, I mean, the 150. We have 44 subject writers, 92 colleges of education tutors. And so we have two each from the 46 public colleges of education. We have five national inspector board lead inspectors. We have national teaching council, 
We have GES representing, and, and so the facilities basically consists of subject writers and technical experts. And so after training, um, the 150 people, they, we are expecting that they also will train regional level people, about 3,900 of them, 15 from each of the 260 districts, and then 12 subject teachers, one district supervisor assistant, and it moves on and on. And after training these regional people, um, we are also expecting that they also train the district level where we have cluster zonal and circuit basis training for 152 basic school teachers from the kindergarten to primary six. And so the training focuses also on how to interpret the content, uh, the standard indicators, the benchmarks. And so we, we are planning a massive rollout so that our teachers will get to know the content in the curriculum, I mean, the method, the right method to be able to teach the content and to ensure that everything for other resources um, government is ready and GES is ready to provide the teachers mm. so that, you know, the curriculum itself cannot do the magic like we always say unless we provide all the resources that uh, we need, um, the teachers need to be able uh, and these to... And these resources you would say are in place already? Um, please come again. I'm asking if these resources that you talk about are in place because for history, for instance, which book, which official book are we settling on to be used for teaching our children? Yes. So um, I know today Naka met some of the publishers. And so, you know, we launched it just last week, and we have now given the curriculum um, to the publishers. And so they have started, I know, to also put the um, content, that's the textbooks together. And so come September, it will be ready. But for the others, like the training manuals and all of that, they are ready. And um, your reporter can testify that we showed it even to them that this is the training manual that we're going to use for, for, for the training of the teachers. For the textbooks, we know come September, it will be settled. So we are yet to settle on an on, on official book uh, to be used for the history. And you're saying you are in the process of getting a publisher for the books. Is that what it is? I said they have started. NACA met the um, Council for Curriculum and Assessment. They've met the, you know, we, they wanted to ask, I mean, they wanted GES to launch the curriculum first before they could hand over to them. But before then, they were doing some underground engagement. And so I know very well that they have started something on not history alone, but for all the other subjects. And so we are so sure and uh, very hopeful that by September, the textbooks would be ready. But for training manuals, mm -hmm. I can confidently tell you that they are ready and we are I mean, by first week of May, they would start the training. But, but, but the concern, though, is that how are we ensuring that the, what we are going to teach our children, especially in the area of history, we are not going to get teachers pushing the ideologies on our children? Well, everything will be spelled out in the curriculum. I mean, you just teach outside the curriculum. It's been put together by experts, historians. I mean, I, I listened to Professor Kwame Kwate and all of that. I mean, these are seasoned um, historians, and they have put together all of these. And so I am very sure that um, teachers will not just teach anything outside the curriculum, but then we'll go, you know, it's um, history is uh, it's taught in the chronological way, and so definitely at one step, you just can't move to any other person. You have to follow it as a test to, I mean, till now, to the present. And so I'm very sure that no teacher will teach outside what is in the, the curriculum. We're grateful for your time. That's Cassandra Chumampofo. Uh, she speaks for the Ghana Education Service. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Kojo. Um, Hans joins us. Hans, are you a Catholic? No. Nope. You're not a Catholic, okay. But you, do you know about the a building called uh, Notre Dame in, yes. uh, in, in France? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's on fire tonight. Um, and uh, for many Catholic friends of ours, this must be really painful. The thing about Kojo is that uh, he just recently visited this particular building. Oh. And, and so, uh, Kojo, you, you, you visited the building. Yes. Um, what do we know about this fire? Uh, well, um, it started at about 6.30 p.m. One of the spires of Notre Dame has collapsed already. But the fire alarm went off much earlier. They evacuated the, the, the cathedral before the fire started to actually uh, take over. But this is a place that has 13 million visitors a year. Including yourself? 
yourself last year. Well, yes, <laughs> um, but, but, um, but of course, it's, it's over 700 years old. It carries uh, a wealth of history, not just of France, but of the Catholic Church. And unfortunately, it appears that much of it will be lost in this fire. Donald Trump tweeted um, a short while ago on this, on this fire. And uh, he says uh, in, in this tweet that he posted that the French should try and get um, uh, helicopters. He says, so horrible. I'm reading here. He says, so horrible to watch the massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Uh, in Paris. Uh, perhaps flying water tankers should be used to put it out. Must act quickly. Well, he no. does have some experience with the California mm -hmm. fires, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Thank you, Kojo. And let's do the man who is here with the sports. Hello, yes. Hans. So, um, seasoned sports analyst Kojo Adaimensa has warned Ghana's Afghan campaign could be jeopardized if money becomes a key issue. Mr. Adaimensa warns Ghana's campaign at this year's Afghan could mirror the Brazil 2014 World Cup, which was characterized by play agitations over appearance fee if money becomes the focus. Anytime the national team is about to go into a tournament, Focus initially will be about the players, will be about the technical team, will be about the management. I mean, it's everything seems to be going well. Once we get to the tournament, money becomes the subject matter. And I think money is what has prevented us from lifting a trophy. We always focus on money. The money that will come to the non-playing body and the playing body. This thing started building way before Brazil and then it built and came to a head in Brazil 2014. Why do we always focus on money? That is why we are always there or thereabout. If we do not stop focusing on money, we will not lift this trophy. We, we the fans, we the pressmen, we the players, we the technical men, we the management, Kujar Diamonds are speaking there and he says we shouldn't focus on the money. Let's focus on the games for the Black Stars mm -hmm. at AFCON 2019. That's your sports. But it's a game tonight in the EPL. That's uh, Watford playing Arsenal. Yes. And that is uh, a crucial game. I think for all the games for, now... It's even more crucial for Manchester United, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Why is it crucial? I mean, it's crucial for everybody else below uh, Liverpool and, and Man Manchester City. Manchester City. Because... Uh, Which it, includes Manchester United. Uh, yes. Too. No problem. I know you mentioned because I'm, I'm a United yeah. supporter. But all the four teams, um, it keeps changing changing week every game because you yeah. win you go up you and, go, and you start wondering yeah. how it's really going to end i think you, you have an idea um i, I know we're going to finish in the top four okay um i think we're going to finish in the top four with with tottenham right uh, so chelsea, chelsea and chelsea arsenal will, will have to stay out and play europa as if always done let's uh, see how we thank do you see. very much hans uh let's uh <laughs> you know do some interesting story mfa what's a microphone without it you can hear me that's a fantastic <laughs> definition of it. Well, we, we, we've been asking a few of you on the streets what that is. What is a microphone? A microphone. <laughs> microphone is, 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 is something, something that uh, companies use. It's, it's a setup that they use to run their businesses. People? Uh, uh, like companies. Companies. Uh, companies. They, they, it's, it's a place that they set these kinds of uh, machines, let me say, uh, electro machines to run their companies, I think to keep, should I say, their emails and uh, messages or store things, yes, just to run their businesses. So those are microphones, microphones. So when was the last time you saw a microphone? Mm. Uh, on television, but not, <laughs> not physically. You've never seen a microphone before? Uh, physically, no. So um, how about, um, what about a xylophone? Xylophone, I think, it's a company that I know in Ghana. Microphone is a microphone, microphone. It's not an Android for it's, but it's rider. It's not a, an Android. You have Android, then we have Windows. Microphone is a Windows phone. Windows phone, yeah. Anglophone is also a type of phone. A type of, one of the type of the phones, yeah. Anglo, Anglophone, you can use it. Yeah, 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 well. <laughs> I mean, but you seem shocked. I'm so shocked. Yeah, well. No, tell me. No, but I like that answer you gave about uh, xylophone. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, but seriously, it's, that's a fact as It's well. a musical instrument. It is, but it's also a company in Ghana. It doesn't, it's not spelled Z. This one is, I think, X or so. Oh, you think? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's anyway. a musical instrument. By the way, the, the correct answer is whatever I gave at the beginning of microphone. Xylophone is definitely a musical instrument, but it's true. I must insist that it's <laughs> yes, also a company in company. Ghana. <laughs> That's it for News Night tonight. My name is Evan Spencer. I am MFA Paolo. Do log on to myjournalonline.com for more news. Nanan Sakwa is up next with That's My Opinion.